Let's talk firecraft bushcrafting at home. Okay, so <laughs> let's say you want to start your fireplace. You've seen me do a ton of videos on this, but just to go over the bird's nest for home use, here's what I have. So I went to a firewood place in the San Fernando Valley on Topanga Canyon. I uh, can't remember what the name of it is right off the top of my head. Too early in the morning. But anyways, what they do is when they when they give you the logs that you want to use, like in this case, there's pine and oak, right? Oak and pine. You can see the difference between the two, right? Pine is a little lighter color. It's going to be lighter. It's going to be less dense. It's going to catch quicker. It's going to burn quicker, hotter, so that the pine ignites the oak. And then depending on what part of the country you're in or what part of the world you're in, you'll kind of know like this wood is less dense, it's lighter, this is what you want to use to get your fire going. Then this wood that's in your region, whatever that is, hickory, cherry, you name it, is going to be more dense. That's what's going to give you that longer sustained fire. So in, in my case here in Southern California, the pine is to get the fire started. The oak is to keep the fire sustained. Even if you're a grill master, and you're doing the barbecue thing or you're looking to get into that and you want to do some backyard barbecues, you know, that kind of vibe. And you want to do the whole nat natural wood thing. This would be something that you would do, like especially here in Southern California, is pine and oak or almond. Like almond is, you really have to have a good fire going before you put almond on because almond won't catch. Ta almond takes a long time to catch. That's why if you already have a sustained fire, then you can add almond that gives you more of that longer burning, you know, sustained heat, that kind of vibe. When you go to your store or wherever you get your wood from, there's going to be a bunch of little like scraggly pieces laying around. And that's where you like pine cones are great. But like all these little scraggly pieces that are left behind, like these are these are the ones that you want to take with you. And the reason for that, <laughs> as we go back over here, is. I'm going to make a little bird's nest to kind of get the fire going so that the, like this is pine right here, so that the pine catches the small piece, ignites the bigger piece, and then the bigger piece of pine ignites the oak. So that's specific to here to Southern California, or maybe, maybe it is prevalent in your part of the country or world or whatever. Uh, so what I've got in here is, is I've got a few of those scraggly pieces, right? There's some, I believe this is like eucalyptus bark or something similar. Just something that has like any of the fruit woods, like orange, lemon trees, that kind of vibe. Something that has a lot of good oil in it or fat wood, like if it is pine, that has, let's see if this one has any, see this one doesn't have any too much, but sometimes you'll get like a, like a line, like a little streak going through of like very, very good dense. See this one kind of, nah, not really, but... If you can find a piece of pine that also has like a bit of resin in it or pine tar, it's even better. So what I do is I have some like little scraggly pieces. I've got a piece of, of wood that didn't burn from the night before that you can also throw in there. See, it's like partially burned. It's kind of like charcoal in a way. Uh, you can throw that in there too. But what I do is I just make like a little bundle, right? And this is cardboard paper. So... So basically what I've got here is this little bundle of joy and I'm going to throw this down first oh, into my fireplace, right? Kind of like in the middle, it doesn't really have to be, doesn't really have to be precise. If I didn't have this, what I could use is, is cardboard egg crates. Egg crates work wonders too. And if you don't have the scraggly pieces, sometimes you can find little dead, you know, dead leaves on the floor. Like this is from a bottle brush tree. You know, you can kind of do that, like whatever you can find. Otherwise, even just regular cardboard works. So then the next the next step in the process is, is now is when you want to start lining up your wood, right? So in this case, what I'm going to do is this would be like a good starter piece because it's so thin, right? Like this would definitely get the fire going and started. So I'm going to put this down in the back kind of like back here and see how I'm putting it on top of these little, it's like a, it's like a shelf. Like I'm building a little shelf so that now I can add the other wood in there. Then on this side, 
See, this is like, see, like almost looks like a railroad tie. Like, this is a good piece of oak right here, like a solid piece of oak. So, this is a heavy, dense piece of oak. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this down in the front, see, in the front, and kind of let it lean towards the back so that if it does fall, it'll fall back into the fireplace instead of out onto your living room, you know, dining room floor, whatever the case may be, or the den or whatever. This is enough to get the fire started. Pine in the back, oak in the front, two pieces, right? If I want to go a little more robust, let's say, I want to get a good fire going, more, more hotter, more sustained. It'll burn quicker in the beginning, that kind of vibe. Now what I can do is I can stack. So I had two pieces of wood this way. What I could do now is stack two more pieces of wood this way, like a tic-tac-toe. So let me show you that real quick. So here's another good, here's another good chunk of, I think this is pine back here. So what I could do is because of this configuration, I could just go at a diagonal, right? But again, remember, if the fire falls, it's gonna fall that way, back towards the back. And obviously you'll have to adjust this. Hopefully you have your set or yourself a good set of like uh, fireplace tongs that you could then, you know, pick something up and move it and that kind of vibe if you need to, like as the fire burns. So it's, it's kind of like set it and forget it for a good amount of time. What's a good amount of time? Depends on your situation. Most cases with me, this is just my experience, maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, I don't have to do anything. I just spark it up and let it go. In some cases, maybe two hours and I don't have to touch it. But in this case, because this top piece is hanging out a little bit, right? It's still within the confines of the screen, which is important. But I do want to make sure that I'm like keeping everything always to the back, always to the back, always to the back. So that, like I said, if the fire, if the, if for whatever reason, if these logs fall, they're going to fall that way and not this way. So gravity is your friend and also the design of your fireplace is your friend. So let's say... Let's say I've got two more pieces of wood here, right? This is a good piece of, I believe this is pine. This is pine and this is also pine. So this is a very light piece, like good piece of pine right there. If you wanna see what the grain looks like, that's what it kind of looks like. And obviously this is like an older piece, but you kind of get an idea. See that pine bark on there? That's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be ignited here pretty soon. But anyways, so now the next step is, how do you light this thing, right? I'm not going to do it now because I want to wait till tonight, but I did the video during the day so you can see a little bit better. But see that little piece of cardboard, right? That cardboard, that wrapping, that uh, shipping cardboard, whatever you want to call it, that's back there. Or if it was the egg crate or whatever the case was, all I'd have to do at this point would be to light it, right? Just get yourself like a Bic lighter or something similar. I like these with the longer tips because you can actually get in there without burning yourself, right? But just to show you, so it would basically light it, light the cardboard. The cardboard is going to catch. It's going to light those smaller pieces inside, ignite those. Eventually, that piece of pine that was back there is going to light. This piece of pine is going to light. And then eventually, our oak is going to light. And that's basically how the whole process goes. If you want to ensure foolproof, right, that there's, you're always going to have a good fire, place fire every time, make sure you've got air right? Air and space are important. So pull some of these, you know, pieces or this, you know, spent charcoal or whatever you, or the spent firewood from the night before, like pull this out a little bit and try to tidy up too. Like if you can get yourself a broom, you know, and a good dust pan and just kind of pull this out so that air can get in there. So you don't want to pack your fireplace fire too tight. And it, it's the same thing, even, even with, if you're going to do a barbecue, if you're going to do a fire pit outside or whatever, just try to clean some of this out. You don't know how many times like a friend or something has called me and said, hey, my fireplace won't lay it. I can't get it going. Like what's going on? I get there and there's literally a mound of ash, right? There's literally like a mound of burnt firewood ash. And they're wondering why their fireplace won't start or why their campfire won't start. If you're doing the campfire thing, like you're backpacking, you're camping, whatever, and, and and you just can't, like you add another piece of wood and it just won't go, like it won't catch. Some people will say like, okay, the wood's wet. Yes, that's a possible explanation, but most of the time it's because when you add wood to your fire, 
try to add it as a tic-tac-toe, right? So if you're down to like coals, this is for your barbecue pit. This is for your fire pit. This is for your campfire. This is for your fireplace at home. If you're down to coals and you want to restart the fire, rekindle the fire, if you can, try to get some smaller pieces on the bottom, like tic-tac-toe, and then add some other pieces on top so that air can get through there, <laughs> like air can flow through there because the fire needs fuel, which is the wood, and it needs air, right, to to help that fire to breathe. And then, of course, you need the spark. So if you're using a lighter, there's your spark. But if you're using coals, that would be your spark. So air, fuel, and spark are what make a good fire. Backyard barbecue, you have a charcoal barbecue, like one of those old school, you know, you lift the lid, kind of looks like a clamshell or whatever. It's all the same. It's all the same. Just adapt it to your specific situation. But this is basically how you get it going. And like I said, some questions that might come up in the comment section. So what do I do if I don't have cardboard? Try to use an egg crate, like cardboard egg crate. No plastic. Don't use plastic. It's very toxic. Cardboard egg crate. If you don't have cardboard, you don't have an egg crate, you just have two pieces of wood like this, you can go this route, which is something like this, right? Where you've got like housewives, this is the their pro fire starter. These are basically pun bundles of little like wood shavings coated in some type of wax, I believe it is, or, or cotton balls and Vaseline. You could do that if you want to. Sometimes, you know, you just got to get creative, but you just want something to get the spark going. And then it's also very important. Size does matter. That's what she said. <laughs> but size does matter in the sense of you try to get smaller pieces on the bottom, bigger pieces on top so that as the fire catches, right? If I took a, if I took my lighter to this piece of oak right now. For experimentation, experimentational purposes, it's not going to catch. I could sit here all day long and this this would never catch, right? It, it would heat up, but it would never catch. Uh, yes, it could catch, <laughs> but you get the point. You want something smaller to catch, to burn next to it, so that that heat, that sustained long heat, then will ignite the oak. And that's why I use the pine. So the pine catches, that's what gets the oak to catch. Does that make sense? I know it's a contradiction of terms. I might've screwed up a couple times here or there, but you can also try these two, right? Fire flame, fire starter. These, these are from Connect, I believe. Uh, safest way to light, fat, to light fast any fire. You kind of get the idea. What these are is they're, it looks like plastic, but it's not actually plastic. It's actually a cellophane vegetable-based material on the outside right here. And inside is this paste, whatever that is that'll kind of give you that long sustained burn time, but try to clean out the area. Like if this is all you had, if you just had a piece of oak and one of these, what I would do is clean out the area as best you can, try to get this elevated somehow off the floor, like whatever you can do to, to you have an old tin can, you have an old tuna can, just something to get this up off the floor, poke some holes in that tuna can so that you can get some air in there, turn the can upside down, Right, so the open side is down, the top the top part is up. Put some holes in there, put one of these on top, put your wood around it, and basically spark the sucker up. Hopefully you get you hopefully you get an ignite. But what's gonna give you more like er, just that little bit extra, that little bit extra of ignition to get your wood started is small pieces, like pencil size thick. Then the next size would be like two fingers or three fingers. Then the next size would be like four fingers, right? Just small pieces of wood that light bigger pieces of wood that eventually light your logs. That's basically what you're looking for. And if you can do that, you should have a better chance of success of getting that fireplace fire going, that barbecue fire, that grill master fire pit going. You get the idea. So hopefully this video out there helps someone. I will put a link to these down below and also these down below them, down below there in the description. Hopefully you're liking these videos, <laughs> hitting that subscribe button as well. I'm the old coot and I'll catch you all in the next one.